The strength shown in block pushing comes not from a single marble, but from teamwork and strength as a collective, which makes this event in the 2020 Marble League, sponsored by Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, that much more interesting. Welcome back to the Andromedome, everybody, where the Minty Maniacs hold a one-point lead over the Arrangers and Crazy Cat's Eyes. Thanks for watching. I'm Greg Woods. Event number seven, a tried and true one that will see Team Stardust head down the track, push the block as far as they can. You don't want too much separation, although a marble here or there can sometimes be used to push them farther in a last flourish. Two teams competing at the same time in each heat. But it's not really a head-to-head -head between them because out of two heats, they will take the best individual run to count toward the championship. Otherwise, it's just bragging rights. Crazy cat size and balls of chaos, off they come and nearly pushing the block out of the track is the crazy cat size. You can see that red marker, by the way, between 80 and 85. That is the record that they're trying to beat. So crazy cat size gets a 70, 50, compared to 67, 65 for the Balls of Chaos. Thunderbolts and the Minty Maniacs now. Minty Maniacs holding that top spot in the standings, doing just enough to stay out in front, but not enough here in this heat. It's the Thunderbolts that will get the better of them out towards 75. Look at the chaos over in the Thunderbolts lane, jostling back and forth side to side, not quite what they wanted. If they could get that patched up and push it forward, they may have had a go at that record. You can see also the numbers after the, the push. That is a provisional spot where they are in the standings. Oceanics and the Hornets. Oceanics kept much tighter together, but it's the Hornets that had more speed coming down the ramp. Oh, look at all of the bumps that they had. Really, the Oceanics only had one or two, and then they almost got sideways, but it was one after another for the Hornets. One, two, three, four more that they just kept careening into each other. 76-80. Hornets take the top spot for now. Green Ducks, who desperately need a good finish, and Mellow Yellow, same can be said for them. And appropriately, it's close between them. Who gets the better of them? It's neck and neck, or even at this last little push, I think the Green Ducks are gonna hold on. Very close, just a centimeter between them. Green Ducks move to second for now. They gotta feel pretty happy with that. And especially these early runs, I have to think it's more about the team on the other side of the wall from you than it will be later. It's driving you further, but the second round is going to be different. Savage Speeders, Midnight Wisps are next up. 81.8, the mark to beat. Oh, and that's very close until the end, but look at this. Midnight Wisps, they've gone past it. That's a new Marble League record. In fact, they've obliterated the old record. Their speeders might have come very close to it, but 85-8-0. Midnight Wisps set the new goal. Nearly a marble and a half in front of the mark, and then you get to the block. Raspberry Racers, our winners from the last event, and the O-Rangers. Oh, that one's going to be very close. Maybe the O-Rangers by a hair. Yes, indeed. The Rangers keeping three bunched up on the block while bringing in the fourth anchor of sorts to give them whatever last flourish they need. It happens so quickly, it can be tough to parse through the different strategies. Hazers and Momo. All bunched together, they're opting for that 3-1. Momo does it to perfection, though, and gets out past 75, should be out past 76. Meanwhile, the Hazers almost launched the block out of the track. Anytime that energy is getting dissipated upward or sideways, it's not going forward. And you see that reflected in a 14th place thus far for the Hazers. Galactic and the Bumblebees. Ooh, even though the Bumblebees got off to a better start, it was Team Galactic came from behind and added a bit at the end. That's getting them close to 80. Good enough provisionally for third. So there we see the results of run number one, 85-80. Well clear of the field by four centimeters. Balls of chaos in the crazy cat's eyes. Line up again. Even separation between them, but the result again goes the way of the crazy cat's eyes. 
they have been very consistent throughout. Both this event and the games as a whole. You can see how it compares to their first runs. Kinti Maniacs and the Thunderbolts up now. Fairly even for them as well, and it's a decently even result, but again, the Minty Maniacs are gonna get the win between them. How does it compare? Again, you see a little bit of that chaos on the bottom lane, and the Minty Maniacs. Not great. They did improve, but for our championship leaders, not where they wanna be. Hornets and the Oceanics, two teams that are at the bottom of the order overall in the Marble League. 14th and 15th for the Hornets and Oceanics, respectively. And let's get a look down the line here and see where this ends up. Oh, that is so even right at the end. It will be the Hornets, just barely. Half a centimeter, maybe. Marble League prides itself on being exact with their measurements. That's why they have so many referees down there. And actually, both of the runs are worse. So no improvement. Mellow Yellow and the Green Ducks, can they improve on their first runs? Mellow Yellow does get the win between them, but this is in the second runs especially, less about bragging rights and more about where you're gonna finish in the overall standings. Oh, and again, the second runs, markedly worse. Green Ducks sitting middle of the pack. I think they'll take that for now, considering they're 12th in the standings, 32 points compared to Minty Maniacs, 91. So only a handful have gotten better. Let's see if the Wisps and the Speeders can do it. They were great in the first one, not great here. A lot of energy being dissipated perhaps in that first go. And it just stopped for them, barely in the neighborhood of 70. It's gonna be disappointing for both of them. Look at how big of a difference it was. 85, almost 86. Down to not breaking 70. O-Rangers and Raspberry Racers. They hit the blocks with a flurry and get out past 80, have the O-Rangers. That'll set them up well. Even the block in the lane, using that fourth anchor marble to give that final extra distance. Raspberry Racers at the bottom looking a little bit disjointed. It is an improvement for both, and in fact, the O-Rangers move up to second place. With only a few marbles left to go. It might be working out well for him. Oh, wow, that was very disjointed. In fact, absolutely chaotic. We nearly had marbles switching places. The Hazers, dead last. 55-3-5, that is not better. Not so for Team Momo. They move up the standings. And so it comes down to this final heat. Our leaders are guaranteed a medal, even if these two break that mark. Will they? No, not even close. Not even 65 and not 75, so Team Galactic will settle in at a fifth place. And given the host's curse that ever hangs over the Marble League, I think they're gonna be happy with that. Who's happier? The Midnight Wisps. Marble League record, Marble League gold. Well done to Momo. Lurching up there in the second place in the O'Rangers our second place team in the Marble League thus far. Get a good points haul out of it. And for winning gold, the Midnight Wisps will have a $5,000 donation made in their name to Gleaners Community Food Bank of Southeastern Michigan. Congratulations to them. Thank you also to Last Week Tonight for making that possible. The two heat block pushing gives us a little bit of a mix up in the standings. The O'Rangers and Crazy Cat's Eyes both jump the Minty Maniacs. Midnight Wisp move up into fourth. It's still bunched up at the top. Be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for more as we get ready 